Hello everyone, this is Dr. Dan from Access Analog, and today we're going to go through our offline processor, which is a tool that every user should know about. So let me dive right in. I've got an audio track playing. I'm running it through my master bus transformer and then through the Zulu passive tape simulator, which we just added, and I love it. It adds a really great finishing sound. And so I'm ready to do a print. And at that, at this point, you have two options for doing your bounce or your print. The first option is in real time, where you're sending your audio, the audio on the track, from your DAW through the internet to our server. It goes through these two pieces of gear, and then it comes back to your DAW, and you re can record it uh, on another track or however you would like. That's for people that have an internet connection that they feel comfortable with will not have dropouts. And they can also run with a transmit format that is a 24-bit lossless and whatever their DAW sample rate is. If you have any concerns about your internet connection or you're not able to run at full lossless with 24-bit, that's when the offline processor, the second option, is something that you want to know about. So in doing this, what we're going to do is we're going to upload a file, process it, save it to our server, and then download it. And that will ensure that no matter how good or bad your internet connection is, you'll always be able to get a pristine bounce. So let me go through that really quickly. I'm going to do it in one pass where it's just a high level so people see how it works. And then in the second pass, we're going to go through the details. So I've got everything set up the way that I want right now with my Zulu tape simulator and the MBT. So now I go to my source panel. And the first step that I want to do is to bring in the file that I'm going to bounce. So in this case, I'm going to drag in this Hammond file. You're going to see it gets uploaded to our server rather quickly. And the first thing to note is now you've got this bounce goes active. And our audio source went to server files. And this is an important step. You have that you can choose between playback from your DAW or you can choose to have playback from your server files. In this case, if you want to do a bounce from the offline processor, this needs to be server files telling us to use the files that have been previously uploaded onto these tracks. We're going to go through these other options in our second pass, but the critical step here is server files for the audio source and you've uploaded your audio. Now the next step is to go to the bounce panel and you get to configure how you would like the bounce to happen. You set up the sample rate, the bit depth of the output wave file. You set up the extended tail file, which I'll explain uh, that in a moment. And then the format can be mono or stereo. In this case, I've got a stereo track as my input, so I'm gonna do stereo as the output. Critical to note, the download to, here's a, a directory, and this button checked, keep bounce files on the server and automatically download completed bounces. So I'll come back and explain those, but it's critical that initially those two are checked. I press the bounce button over here, and now you'll see I've got a file here which is named from the server files, so 22 Hammond, and it's going to be 22 Hammond B1, or Bounce 1. And you could see that I had status over here. It was telling me how uh, much it had completed. And once that file is completely bounced, it shows up in my list of bounced files. Now, also critical to know, if you have this automatically download completed bounces, and you've got this set up to a directory, then that same file, the same one that's here on our server, was simultaneously downloaded to this user directory. So you could go find it and you can continue with your workflow. People had asked us initially the way we set it up was the files were only going to this bounced file directory and then we made them download the file and that was slowing down their workflow. So we now do the same thing in parallel. We download it to our server and we download it to your laptop or your computer. So I hope that makes sense. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. You upload the files, you've got your gear set the way you want, you go to the bounce panel, you set up the way you want the output file, and then you press bounce. So now let's go back and look at some of the checkboxes in a little bit more detail. This, we've already discussed the audio source. If you're gonna do a bounce, it needs to be set to server files. If you wanna do just simple playback, forget about what's loaded here in the server files. You just wanna do playback from your DAW, like this is showing here. 
then you set that to DAW, but if you want to do a bounce, it needs to be server files. Now, there is a couple options. You can upload files from playback. That means that you could capture your audio directly from your DAW. And there's another video that describes how to do that. In this video, as you saw, I uploaded it directly from a, a directory on my computer. This other uh, next line is import bounce, uh, import from bounces, which will tell you, uh, it gives you a way to rebounce a bounced file. So you can see this file is here in my bounced files. Some people like to go through and bounce a file again. So you can import your bounced files. You just select it here and you'll notice that we now loaded the bounced file into our server files to be rebounced if we wanted to. And these next two buttons are important. With this button checked, it means all the files that you've uploaded stay on our server for 30 days and they will not be deleted. If this marker, if this checkbox is unchecked, when you press disconnect, then all the files that you've uploaded to that point will be deleted. Some people don't want to leave files on our server. We understand that. So we give them this ability to check or uncheck the box. But I'll show you a trick in just a second uh, uh, why you might want to keep this box checked. The second one is sync server file to playback to DAW. That is another feature that um, we call internet optimized and will be discussed in a separate video. So for right now, you can leave it unchecked. But the thing that's important to know about this cache source files on the server, you noticed that I've deleted, I, I pressed the X to remove the files from my channels one and two. I have a couple ways of getting files here. You saw that I earlier did a drag and drop. There's also this circle arrow with the watch hands, and that lets me go and look at the 10 most recent files that I've uploaded. So instead of having to upload them again, I can just go to my most recent, select it, and it gets loaded. There's another way, so I'm going to clear this. You can also do an upload where you go and select it from a file. So if you do the, the three dots, it gives you a traditional directory structure, and you can go find the files you want. But then there's also another way that's a little bit more subtle, and I want to show. Given that we've already uploaded this 22 Hammond, another way to do it that some people like, we're... The code is smart enough that if you try to redrag a file that's already been uploaded, we don't re-upload it, we just grab it from our directory. So there's several ways to get that file loaded. And in summary, you can do a drag and a drop. You can do the three dots to get to a directory and upload it. You can upload or reload something that's previously been loaded or you can import it from bounce. You can uh, load into here files that have previously been bounced. So several ways to get your files to that, uh, those channels so they can be down, bounced. Then to go to this directory, we've now got these boxes that I mentioned before. I think all of them are pretty self-explanatory. It lets you set the sample rate for your output wave file. The bit depth, sometimes people want 16 bits, sometimes 32. Most often it's 24 to match what our converters. Then there's this extend file tail. And we've been asked to add this for people that have reverb in their chains. So let's say you had a very long reverb tail and you wanted to make sure that entire tail was captured. You can then set the output to add an additional two seconds, four seconds, or eight seconds to really capture the entire decay of the reverb. And then of course, format for the output, it can be mono or stereo, that pretty much matches what your input file is. And now let's look more closely, um, keep bounced files on server. This is the same thing as the complement to this button, cache the source files on the server. And what it means is, if you keep this checked, then the bounced files will stay on our server. If you uncheck it, and you disconnect, then the files that were previously bounced are all going to be deleted at the end of your session. So make sure that you know exactly what you want before you disconnect, whether you want to keep those files or not. And we talked about the automatically download uh, completed bounces. That's, uh, a fi that's the checkbox that allows you to tell us that you want to download the bounced file at the same time you're doing the bounce. 
So that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully this is a feature that everyone understands. We're always available on the support chat in case uh, it's something isn't clear. You can always send a, a note to us there and we'll try to answer it as quickly as we can. But as I mentioned before, this is a critical tool that everybody knows about. And uh, if you have any in concerns about your internet, then you're going to want to use the offline bounce. So that's it from Access Analog. We hope that uh, the studio level analog gear is really enhancing your life. We're getting great feedback about our new version 7 of the plugin. So we'll continue to add features and keep things exciting. <laughs>